In this day and age, 3D has become more and more available and used in a vast range of fields other than video games and movies, and one of those fields is internet and websites. As you may have noticed, in the last couple of years, 3D has become a trend in web design and it seems to be staying for a long time, and that is thanks to modern web browsers and mobile devices, which are now capable of running 3D scenes without any struggle. That being said, if you are a front-end developer and you are super excited to get started creating web apps and designs that incorporate 3D, there are a few things and concepts you need to understand first. OpenGL, it's an application programming interface aka API which role is to simply make an application able to interact with the graphics card in order to render things on the monitor. WebGL, as I said, OpenGL serves as a communication channel between an application that is written in a certain programming language and the graphics card. Web browsers though weren't able to run OpenGL until March 2011, which is the date of the initial release of WebGL. That said, WebGL is merely a lightweight version of OpenGL, known as OpenGL ES, that we can run on web browsers. Furthermore, WebGL is nothing other than a set of JavaScript functions that serves as a link between the browser and the graphics card in order to display 2D and 3D stuff on a web page. Shaders, if WebGL is the medium that the browser uses to communicate with the graphics card, then shaders are the instructions that we send through that medium. They are essentially some small programs that we embed in the application code as strings or using script tags with special values set to their type attribute. There are two types of shaders, the vertex shader and the fragment shader. A vertex is a synonym of point, so a vertex shader is a small set of instructions that we send to the GPU through WebGL, which role is to simply assign the position of a point or multiple points that form a mesh or a shape. A fragment shader, on the other hand, is responsible of the colorization of one or more vertices, that being said, giving a color to a shape in a fragment shader goes through a handful of steps such as rasterization, but that's a pretty complicated process that needs an entire video on its own. GLSL ES GLSL ES stands for OpenGL ES Shading Language. It is a programming language very similar to C, and we need it to type the vertex and fragment shaders. 3GS, Babylon GS, and other 3D libraries these libraries serve as a layer between the actual program and the WebGL API to simplify the code. So here, for example, to create this cube, I needed 82 lines of code. Using 3GS, though, I created the same cube with 18 lines only. WebGPU WebGPU is a recent API that is not yet released, but it is definitely a game changer when it comes to rendering complex 3D scenes because it has proven to be way more performant than WebGL. That being said, you might be wondering if you should start learning WebGL or skip it and go for WebGPU instead. Well, the answer depends on what you need to achieve. In my case, as a front-end developer, I'd say learning one or both of them is a bonus and definitely not a must. And that's because most, if not all the time, I'll be working with a library such as 3GS. So actually, it doesn't matter for me to know how the API is running behind the scenes. What I need to be good at is working with the library that deals with the API, not the actual API. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.